a unique school based on Indian cultural heritage and global vision, which has a record of 100% result in ICSE, State Board and PU Board examinations. Autreya Educational Institutions, a famous name in Mandya for more than a decade, providing you a world-class education from nursery to PUC. Enhanced with a newly constructed environment-friendly building, spacious smart classrooms, well-equipped labs and library, experienced teachers with motherly care and updated teaching methods including four language learning concept, regular multiple cultural and sports activities and best vehicle facility. What else do you expect? Join your children today. We make them complete human beings and present them as real gift to the society. Srimati Anuradha Raghu, Adhyaksharu, KS Raghu, Vakilaru, Hagu, Karyadar Shikaru. Admissions open for 2020 and 21. Pre KG, UKG classes to 10th standard. Sampar Kisi, Duravani Sanke, 998679 7652. डबल एट सिक्स सेवन जीरो वन फाइव नाइन थ्री सिक्स हागू डबल एट सिक्स सेवन जीरो वन फाइव नाइन थ्री सेवन एक्सपीरियंस ऑत्रेया फील एट होम Okay, children. In our previous session, we understood about the three important parts of the cell, that is, plasma membrane, cytoplasm, and the nucleus. Now, let us get into the important organelles which structured inside the cell, and each organelle performed their major role. Every organelle has a major function in making the cell lively and actively performing. If the cell is living, then the organism is living. If the cell does not perform its work or there is a cell does not have its proper functioning then definitely it affects the organism you know life okay so it can be applicable for both unicellular organism as well as multicellular organism please understand this now we are going to understand about each one organelle which exist inside the cell structure organelles are the living part of the cell which are scattered inside the cytoplasm so where does this organelles are present they are actually present in cytoplasm okay now we'll let us get back to the st structure of the cell here we will we will study each one single organelle its structure and its important function so when you look into the cell there are so many structures present there are so many which i have not written even there are few structures which i have highlighted and on the go when i explain things we will add up one one organelle and we will understand its structure as well as function so you see the nucleus holds the center portion of the animal cell when you observe an animal cell under the microscope we usually find this you know the prominent nucleus which exists in the center portion of the animal cell while in plant cell i'm talking about while in plant cell say this is a plant cell okay we have a cell wall which is which provides rigidity and shape for the cell cell wall is there in plant cell okay this is plasma membrane in plant cell usually the nucleus is present towards a side to the wall okay so this is a wall which is present in the plant cell so nucleus is slightly pushed towards the wall that is because it has a large vacuole present vacuole we'll be talking about vacuole and its structure function again so when why i you know why i'm trying to compare this this because you should understand when you look into the microscope when you observe a certain cell you should be capable of understanding on what basis you say the given slide as a plant cell or else animal cell with the easiest method if you are able to you know visualize the thick wall then it is plant cell 
when there is you know uh, usually uh, animal cell will not have this cell wall it has only cell membrane so cell membranes are usually very thin layer it's a very very thin layer and animal cell carries only plasma membrane but not the cell wall but in plant cell they have a cell wall with a plasma membrane and then cytoplasm and a large vacuole with a cornered nucleus along with other organelles now we will study one by one organelle its structure and its important function so organelles are the living structure present or scattered in the cytoplasm of both plant cell and animal cell but there are few organelles which is missing in plant which is present in animal or else which are not present in animal which will be present in plant cell now let us understand organelles one by one the very first organelle that is endoplasmic reticulum okay next we have golgi apparatus or golgi complex golgi complex third we have mitochondria okay fourth we have ribosomes fifth we have lysosomes seventh we have plastids eighth we have okay there are a few more we have a uh, vacuole we have so many children we have so many to study on so then we have centrosome we have nucleolus okay when i talk about organelles i'm sorry when i talk about organelles we have few organelles which are i'm told it is a living structure okay it is a living structure so these are the organelles which are living structure inside the cell so centrosome and then we will have nucleus also it is not an organelle but it's an important part of the uh cell okay so we let us discuss on eight different major organelles major organelles which is responsible for the cell to perform its active role in the body now let us understand endoplasmic reticulum okay we will talk about endoplasmic reticulum first okay when you see the structure of the nucleus i have just written the only the half structure of the nucleus the endoplasmic reticulum is a, is a double membrane it is a double membraned structure and it is present on the either side of the nucleus okay it's a double membraned tubular you see it's a tube like structure if you see any puzzle book if you see any book which has a puzzle oriented like that there is a few structures where there is a movement takes place where this is blockage so this is a double membrane membrane tubular tubules okay we also call them a double membrane structure or double double membrane tube like structures so this this is endoplasmic reticulum which you can see on either side on the either pole of the nucleus when you say this is a north pole you can actually see the endoplasmic reticulum on the upper and the lower end of the nucleus while there are two types of endoplasmic reticulum that is one smooth er er means it is a endoplasmic reticulum another one is rough rough er okay so 
there they are actually connected with the nucleus please understand endoplasmic reticulum are of two types they are double membraned tubular like arrangements which is present on the either side of the nucleus where one will be a smooth endoplasmic reticulum and the other one is a rough endoplasmic reticulum smooth endoplasmic reticulum the structure the surface of the this membrane are very smooth okay that is why they are said to be smooth endoplasmic while in rough endoplasmic if you see here there are few structures which has been written in the dotted dotted arrangements and these arrangements are said to be ribosomes rough endoplasmic reticulum are studded okay they are studded with ribosome on their outer wall hence the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum looks rough the texture of the endoplasmic reticulum is rough because of the arrangements of ribosome on its surface and hence it is called as rough endoplasmic reticulum okay children so endoplasmic reticulum is an important organelle which is attached to the nucleus on the either side they are very closer to the nucleus they are double membraned tubular like arrangements okay and there are two types of endoplasmic reticulum one is smooth endoplasmic and another one is rough endoplasmic smooth because their structure are texture is smooth while rough endoplasmic will have ribosome studded on the surface hence they are rough in its texture that is why they are called as rough endoplasmic reticulum now in biology or in science every structure has its function okay simply there is the, there is no structure without any function there are structures all the structures will carry their respective function so what is the function of ribosome ribosomes helps in protein synthesis that is the function of ribosome now what is the function of endoplasmic reticulum endoplasmic reticulum actually they act as a skeletal you know um, skeletal support to the cell please understand they gives a skeletal framework to the cell they give a skeletal support to the cell a cell especially the animal cell do not have cell wall they are highly flexible they are not rigid because they are highly flexible but to make the cell you know uh, to have the skeletal framework this endoplasmic reticulum fix the nucleus at the center and it holds if you see this endoplasmic reticulum is extended till the plasma membrane isn't it just even here also it will be connected to the plasma membrane that means to say it holds the nucleus in its center position first thing by holding the nucleus in the center position it gives a skeletal framework to the cell so the nucleus is exactly at the center and all other organelles are scattered and they are performing their normal function and they helps in the transport of fat and proteins now i say this is a nucleus now we will talk the i have written the half portion of the nucleus okay from the nucleus there are certain protein molecule which comes out and they are carried with the respective they are carried with the respective path since they are tubular like arrangement they are moved in a you know a, a proper path they are channelized in a proper direction to reach its destination the there are certain protein which is actually shared with the next cell there are certain informations or it will be in the form of a chemical messenger which is transferred from the nucleus through endoplasmic reticulum to the next cell so the major function now this is a structure what we spoke okay it is a double membrane structure it is double membrane structure tubular structure okay it helps in uh, sorry we will understand it is made up of two types there are two types of er smooth and 
rough okay this is about the structure now if we talk about function okay it helps it provides skeletal framework to the cell and also it helps in transport of protein fat and other materials from nucleus to another cell or from nucleus to within the cell so these all channelization will be done by endoplasmic reticulum hope you understood about the organal endoplasmic reticulum so the smooth endoplasmic reticulum rough endoplasmic reticulum and they are just holding the nucleus at its center it provides a skeletal framework to the cell and also helps in the transport of so many materials like protein fat and other ions to the either nearby neighboring cells or within the cell okay and there are two types smooth and rough rough is just because of the ribosome studded on the surface so we understood about endoplasmic reticulum next let us talk on the next important organelle that is golgi complex each organelle has its function children please understand and they have a vital role and it is so fun to understand each organelle detail now golgi complex is a flat like structure if you see they are flat tubular structure if you see the structure you see they, they are flat and sag like structure okay they are sag they are flat and sag like structure okay now golgi complex is otherwise called as golgi apparatus it is also called as golgi golgi apparatus or it is otherwise called as golgi bodies okay so this golgi body is just look very similar to endoplasmic reticulum but it has a different function here this golgi apparatus is a tube or sag like arrangement they are just like sag like arrangement each one will be sag like arrangement which is which is staked one upon the other they are connected to each other okay the sag like arrangement and they have a bulged ending this ending portion is slightly bulged if you see this ending they are slightly bulged portion and these ending portion will have will have a specific name and the name for this ending portion is called as sister name okay it is sister name so golgi complex is a flattened sag like structure it is flat sag like structure each are connected one to another the end portion of these sag are bulged and they are called as cisternae okay okay these cisternae will have enzymes what is present in the cisternae they are bulged because they produce you know 40 different types of enzymes okay these cisternae will have 40 different types of enzymes which is which is very much which has very much important uh, catalytic function and also they uh, perform different kinds of degradable function we will talk about that right now cisternae when uh, okay this cisternae have a rigorous vibration moment please understand the cisternae are loosey like structure they have a vibration they keep on having a vibrated movement when they keep on moving what happens these portion you know these portion get vibrated movement and now i'm i'm giving you like how the structure goes they 
get deeper okay as they move they get deeper and it cut off here once it cut off they become a bulged portion and they get detached out okay these bulged cisternae will have a vibrating movement when the function of either germs enters to our cell or any unwanted structures get inside the cell that triggers the Golgi complex and the cisterne vibration of the cisterne result in you know um, detaching out from the major Golgi bodies so these bodies will have enzymes these bodies will have enzymes and these enzymes are called as vesicles okay so each cisterne will have enzymes different types of enzymes there are 40 to 20 to 40 different types of enzymes are actually present in the cisterne and the cisterne makes up a vibrating movement when unwanted substance enter into the cell okay when some say like this is a bacteria enter the cell now let me give you an idea about that this bacteria has entered the cell this Golgi complex receives the information within a fraction of second and what happens these cisternae start vibrating and producing vesicles okay there will be so many vesicles which is produced finally these vesicles move along and finally reach very close to the bacteria once after they reach close to the bacteria they engulf the bacteria okay so cisternae will develop into will mature into vesicles this vesicles perform you know uh, engulfing the they have the function of engulfing engulfing the foreign body so how this takes place now say this is a vesicle okay this vesicle has enzymes and this is a bacteria so these vesicles move and they produce a pseudopodial like structure and these bacteria are very close by now and finally this vesicle uh, sorry now this bacteria okay now this tries entering into and finally they become normal in their structure so the bacteria enters inside this okay hope you are getting connected with each diagram here so they have enzymes now the bacteria is engulfed by producing pseudopodia movement just like an amoeba we know like amoeba performs a pseudopodial movement in search of food and it also helps for locomotion here vesicle helps you know the cell by identifying the unwanted substance either it can be a germ or any pathogen or any other substance which is unwanted for the cell they go in search of that and finally they engulf the substance once they engulf the substance these enzymes which is present they destroy so this is called as intercellular digestion okay this is called as intercellular digestion they engulf the bacteria they digest the bacteria and finally these vesicles these matured vesicles are otherwise called as lysosome so hope you are getting a connection between Golgi complex and lysosome the matured vesicle is now called as lysosome lysosome engulfs the unwanted substance vesicle now don't get confused ma'am what is vesicle lysosome they all are interconnected children so once they are detached from the Golgi complex, once these are detached from the Golgi complex, these structures are called as vesicles. Once they move and engulf the bacteria, then that structure is called as lysosome. Okay, these lysosomes do intercellular digestion. So intercellular digestion. vesicles can either eat up the unwanted substance like bacteria or any other germ particles or else they can also destroy any other organelles which is not working say like this mitochondria is not performing its work it has lost, lost its activity 
then what it do this vesicle can also eat up the entire mitochondria it can kill the entire mitochondria by engulfing and destroying the mitochondria into pieces okay because the cell does not require the unwanted you know organ if the organ is not working why the cell require that it is not required it is a waste of the organ present you know uh, giving a space inside isn't it so these vesicle once after they engulf they become lysosome these lysosome after digesting they kill the bacteria or the any or the unwanted organelle they all are killed into small tiny bits and finally they themselves undergo destruction the cell wall of these lysosome will undergo destruction and hence they are called as suicide bag of the cell hope you got the connectivity between golgi complex and lysosome so lysosome is otherwise called as suicide bag so suicide bag of the cell because they engulf the unwanted substance along with any other unimportant organelle which is not working is from the cell they can eat up any of the unwanted structures which is present inside the cell finally they digest them and also they kill themselves by digesting the cell wall the cell wall undergoes destruction hence they are said to be the suicide bag so we started from golgi complex and we ended up with lysosome so the connecting point is that lysosomes are available only when the unwanted substance enters the cell okay and they are developed from the golgi complex so this is what we learnt in the golgi complex golgi complex is a flat like structure which has uh, you know a, a sag like structure which which uh, connects which is connected to one to another and the end portion of these sag like structures are bulged in its nature and they are called as a cisternae this cisternae contains 20 to 40 different types of enzymes which helps in digesting process okay now these golgi complex gets triggered up while there is an internal you know um, um, what to say when there is some important or unwanted substance or any of the pathogenic bacteria or virus which enters a cell it triggers the golgi complex and the cisternae undergoes lit literally a vigorous vibration this vibration can actually detach the cisternae and they become vesicle these vesicle can move around the cell in search of the unwanted substance and engulf with the production of pseudopodia and finally they engulf and then they digest by intracellular digestion and also they this digestion process they become lysosome they kill even the unwanted organelles present inside the cell which is not performing its function and they under you know they even kill themselves by digesting their own cell wall that is how they become the suicide bag of the cell okay hope you understood this is very important that is golgi complex next we will learn about mitochondria mitochondria is a very important organelle as we all study from the basic mitochondria is said to be the power house of the cell isn't it mitochondria is said to be the power house what do you mean by the term power power means energy isn't it power means electricity that is what we connect with so electricity is nothing but energy so mitochondria is said to be the power house of the cell now let us understand the structure of the mitochondria mitochondria is made up of double membrane they are double membrane structure okay so this is the outer membrane and now i am drawing you i am drawing the inner membrane inner membrane will have a folding inner okay this is outer membrane children this is an outer membrane okay where this is one portion of the outer membrane when you cut an apple you see the outermost red color and also inside white now just think about that that is this is a red portion of the apple and it's a inner pulpy white color okay mitochondria is a double membrane so this is a outer membrane okay now inside 
the inner membrane is longer than the outer membrane please understand in mitochondria the inner membrane is very long and lo they are very long than the outer membrane hence they cannot fix exactly into the plane structure they have to make a scaffolding scaffolding means at least they need to make a few projections so now you see it is like a finger like projection a finger like projections you can see so this is the inner membrane inner membrane is very long than the outer membrane to make the inner membrane completely fix inside the inner membrane will have a projections like a finger like projections and they completely fix inside the outer membrane of the fix inside the outer membrane of the mitochondria okay and this complete structure is actually filled this complete structure is made up of matrix okay i would have drawn that first okay let me give you that detail so inner layer is completely made up of matrix okay and this inner membrane is also present inside the matrix of the mitochondria structure of mitochondria is very important they will definitely ask you to draw a neat label diagram and explain the function of mitochondria this is okay this is inner membrane we have already written and this blue colored portion is the matrix okay and this projection this finger like projection is called as cristae please understand few terminologies this is very important in previously when we spoke about golgi complex the bulged portion is called a cisternae and here the finger like projection is called as a cristae where uh, the majority of the you know um, function of the mitochondria results in the cristae region okay so cristae is a finger like projections which is present inside the matrix inside the matrix now this is the structure hope you understood what is a structure structure i'll repeat once again mitochondria is about 100 numbers okay inside the cell cell itself is a so small and tiny and the organelles are still more tiny and their function is very big when compared to the you know the growth of a living organism and to just understand in this tiny cell we have around 100 odd numbers of mitochondria each mitochondria has its important same function mitochondria also contain dna that is deoxyribose nucleic acid so i'll write here uh, mitochondria is made up of it is a double membrane structure it has outer membrane and the inner membrane inner membrane is long and hence they have a finger like projected and finally fixed inside the cell okay inside this organelle inside the mitochondria it's a jelly like structure which is made up of matrix and every scaffolding structure of this inner membrane it's a finger like projection which is called as cristae even mitochondria do have their own dna dna means it is deoxy ribo nucleic acid okay deoxy ribo nucleic acid that is what we call it as dna it is not only the cell will have the nucleus even the mitochondria do have their own new you know uh, dna present okay uh, only the nucleus will not have the dna even the mitochondria and also we will talk about which are the other organelles have mito you know dna in them so mitochondria have their own source of dna and they perform its own function okay now what is the important function of mitochondria as we know mitochondria is said to be the powerhouse of the cell function okay it is said to be the powerhouse of the cell that is basic we all know it is a powerhouse of the cell how this power how this energy is generated see the, it actually helps in 
cellular respiration okay you will learn in detail in your higher classes what is cellular respiration we respire that is through breathing process okay actually these oxygen that we take through our respiratory tract and the food that we eat which is absorbed from the digestive tract okay this food and oxygen undergo oxidation process inside the cell it has to reach the cell food is important to say our cell is growing our cell is multiplying so we said the food what we eat it is required for the cell to grow when we grow that it is obviously we say that the cell is growing that is why we are growing what do you mean by cell growth the cell is not expanding its size no but the cell is dividing the one cell get divided into two two again divide into another four okay that is how the growth of the body takes place so this food is necessary for the cell the oxygen that we inhale is also necessary for the cell and this oxygen oxidizes the food in the cell and final process of this oxidation takes place in the mitochondria okay so the final step is the production of atp please understand food and oxygen undergo oxidation to produce an important uh, product which is called as pyruvate okay please understand this term food and the oxygen is required for the cell they reach the cell and finally the food is in the form of glucose okay that is called as glucose and glucose undergo glycolysis glycolysis means glycolysis or it is simply called as glycolysis okay glycolysis glyco means it is glucose lysis means it is breakdown so whatever the food we eat it is converted into glucose and these glucose are utilized by the cell and these glucose will be broken down into smaller smaller tiny substance and that substance will be converted into one important product which is called as pyruvate okay this pyruvate is further oxidized to form atp that is adenosine triphosphate so this glycolysis that is breaking down of glucose into different products and the final product of this glycolysis will be atp and the intermediate product will be pyruvate from this pyruvate we are converting the pyruvate into atp this conversion of pyruvate into atp is done inside the mitochondria okay so more and more atp is actually so more and more atp is formed they are formed inside the mitochondria hence it is called as power house of the cell so hope you understood about mitochondria the function is a, it is a major power house of the cell it helps in cellular respiration it helps the process of glycolysis to get completed and form numerous amount of atp atp means it is a energy currency of the cell okay and also it produces many enzymes which is required for the production of atp so it also helps in um you know uh, enzyme production hope you understood these are the two important functions of mitochondria and this mitochondria plays very important major role in performing the cell to be active in its work because if the cell has to be active it requires a lot of energy and who is the supplier of this energy they are nothing but the mitochondria supplies those energy okay hope you understood till here that is about mitochondria now next we will move into ribosome ribosome is a small tiny substance or the tiny structures which is formed in the nucleolus okay let me also say this ribosomes are the structures which is produced in the nucleolus of the cell where is the nucleolus 
when you see this structure this blue color structure inside the nucleus nucleolus is this it's a dark stained portion inside the nucleus and the major function of the nucleolus is that to produce ribosome ribosome is actually produced in the nucleolus of the cell okay and what is its function ribosomes helps in protein synthesis without ribosome the protein synthesis does not take place okay as we said ribosome is major function in the protein synthesis please understand children there are so many proteins which is required for our body either in the form of a hormones either in the form of a enzymes okay so proteins can be a layer around the cell structure it is protective in function it helps the body mass to grow it helps in the repair and replacement of the body tissues so proteins are involved in majority of the body functions okay so for this protein to get synthesized this protein requires so many different sources in the, among that source ribosome is one important so protein synthesis is dependent on ribosome if ribosome structures are not present then the protein synthesis is affected in that cell or else in that body okay now ribosomes where does it is located where does ribosomes are located ribosomes are just spread in you know they are actually scattered the ribosomes are scattered in the cytoplasm and also they are scattered on the endoplasmic reticulum please understand ribosomes can be scattered around the cytoplasm of the cell and also the ribosomes can be fixed on the rough endoplasmic reticulum okay these are the two these are the locations when they ask you where exactly the ribosomes are present you can just blindly say they are on the endoplasmic reticulum which is rough endoplasmic reticulum apart from that there are free you know lying rib ribosomes which are just scattered around the cytoplasm now hope you understood ribosomes so they are majorly produced inside the nucleolus of the cell and its major function is for protein synthesis now let us understand the next one that is plastids since we got to know what is lysosome let us understand what is plastids plastids are double membrane structure and they are present only in plants okay they are present only in plants they are not present in animals plastids are of three types that is chloroplast leucoplast chromoplast okay chloroplast we know what is chloroplast it is a disk like structure okay it is a disk like structure which is green in color i mean because of the presence of an important pigment called as chlorophyll so chloroplast is produced uh, chloroplast produce chlorophyll it is a disk like structure in which the it imparts green color pigmentation which is called as a chlorophyll and chlorophyll is responsible for the photosynthesis process because chlorophyll absorb the sunlight and you know it helps the cell to undergo photosynthesis in function that is a major function of the plant and that is only done with the help of a chlorophyll you know chlorophyll availability because chlorophyll can have the, they have the tendency to absorb the sunlight okay so chlorophyll helps in the photosynthesis process we know when we get into the um, lesson photosynthesis we will learn much about the structure and also its function okay inside this chlorophyll we have an important structure which is called as thylakoids where the chlorophyll are actually present and we are you know this thylakoids are stacked one upon the other which is called as a grana and each thylakoids are connected okay to each other and finally this complete thylakoid is 
submerged or they are actually uh, present in the jelly like or matrix which is called as stroma okay thylakoid each one thyl you know grana is stacked one upon the other to form a thylakoid structure okay this is grana okay each one grana connect to one to another to form a thylakoid this thylakoid is surrounded by a matrix jelly like structure which is called as stroma so there are two important parts that is thylakoid and a jelly like structure which is called as stroma so thylakoid contains an important pigmentation which is chlorophyll and chlorophyll have the tendency of absorbing sunlight once they absorb sunlight they help the plant to perform photosynthesis okay so that is an important function of chloroplast leucoplast leucoplast helps in the storage of food in the plant body chloroplast are actually present on the tender portion of the plant body where the plant is completely you know uh, equally distributed with a green colored uh, uh, you know um, the color distribution is green that is because of the presence of chloroplast in the plant leucoplast is present in specific region of the plant where they helps in storage in function storage in function especially the place where the leucoplast is present is in the roots okay roots usually stores a lot of um, uh, you know glucose uh, carbohydrates and also proteinaceous components are actually stored inside the leucoplast region especially the roots stores few amount of you know the storage function that is by leucoplast chromoplast the name chromo means color so color is actually the best part of the plant body which imparts a beautiful color that is a flower so and also the fruit so when the flower blooms it attracts the bees for the pollination that color it's because of the special pigmentation in the plant body and that is done by chromoplast there are so many color pigmentation that is xanthophyll carotene etc okay xanthophyll is yellow color carotene is orange red color so um, um, there are so many different uh, you know color ranges where the plant actually um, produce because of certain pigmentation which is present in the plant and that is done by chromoplast especially the chromoplast region of the plant body will be present only on the flower and the fruit region okay so initially it, uh, the unripened fruit the raw fruit will be green and later on it you know the tendency of the green color undergoes paling it becomes yellow and slightly it deepens the color to orange and red so there are so many fruits that we can actually name like um, banana papaya uh, apple orange these all are the fruits where initially they go with the green in color mangoes okay initially they go with the raw color that is a green in color because of the chlorophyll pigmentation later on the tendency of the pigmentation deepens because of the specific portion of the plastids works so that is how the plastids helps in the performing in pigmentation production for the plant body at the specific region okay this is a important function of the plastids and finally let us come to the centrosome 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 is only present in animal cell but not in plant cell only in animal okay centrosome is made up of microtubules and centrioles so the structure of centrosome is this is the structure of the centrosome with a microtubules which is present it's a rail like structure which is scattered around this portion okay this will be very close to the nucleus if you see here 
this is the portion which I have drawn okay I have just expanded the portion this is centrosome centrosome produce centrioles and the centrioles number will be one or two depending on the kind of a cell okay centrioles are usually closer to the nucleus it is closer to the nucleus in the animal cell it is only present in animal cell and these centrosome contains two important portion one is a centriole the center portion is called as a centriole and the outer portion it is a tube like structure which projects every side this is called as microtubule okay there this is the structure about the centrosome what is the function of the centrosome centrosome majorly helps in cell division the initiation of the cell division actually takes place from the centrosome when the cell has to attain a division the centriole that is the centriole portion will undergo first equal division first the centriole will divide they get separated they become separated okay so, so centriole will divide equally there will be two centrioles these two centrioles will come to the opposite portion we will talk when we do cell division the next chapter about cell division so centrio centrosome is actually closer to the nucleus and this centrosome will have have a two important structure centriole and the microtubule microtubule produce aster like fibers to project around the cell when it undergo cell division okay now centrosomes major important function is to initiate the cell division the first cell division is initiated or started or which is triggered by the division of centriole once the centriole divides then the cell will undergo division the next process is that so this is about the function of centrosome okay okay these are the important organelles which is present inside the cytoplasm of a cell which are the living portion of the cell and it carries major functions children and each organelles is very important learn the you know learn the points please chart out the points make a keywords undermark the keywords please underline the keywords mention the keywords in a blocked letter understand please draw the schematic representation neatly ah one more thing i have to tell you that when see uh, i've been doing valuation for icsc i've seen many papers where they draw the diagram say this is a cell diagram and they put all the kind of rays around and finally they label it is very bad okay when you are when your science student should always have the discipline in doing certain work okay discipline in the sense when you draw a diagram it has to you know every label should be on one side just don't draw all this you know a sun rays it projects everywhere just like that everybody projects here here you should not do like that that is not the ethics of you know drawing when you draw a neat labeled diagram when they say neat labeled diagram all the labeling should be at one end okay just mark it if something is here just mark it just give it down and give it a labeling what is that that is very important children okay hope you understood about the organel structures and its important function and the major organel which is present inside that is the nucleus nucleus apart from the organel it is a major part of the cell nucleus we spoke about the nucleolus function it is nothing but they produce ribosomes and ribosomes helps in protein synthesis apart from that there is one more structure which you see here it is a thread like structure isn't it you see the thread like structure and this thread like structure is called as chromatin fibers let us understand that also it is very important chromatin fibers chromatin fibers is a long thin thread like structure which is present 
inside the nucleus okay when we draw a nucleus this is the structure of the nucleus children it's a round prominent and the nucleus have a wall or a membrane which is a double membrane okay this is a structure of the nucleus which is a double membrane and there is a small tiny pore which is called as a nuclear pore okay this is nuclear pore pore means a small tiny hole okay and this is the nuclear membrane okay this is nucleoplasm okay so we studied three important structures here one is nuclear pore nuclear membrane is a double membrane and we have nucleoplasm just like a cytoplasm inside the cell the liquid present inside the nucleus is called as nucleoplasm okay so cytoplasm and the nucleoplasm can get interchange with a substance which get interchanged through nuclear pore now inside the nucleoplasm we have a dark stain structure which is called as a nucleolus the main function of nucleolus is the production of rna please understand nucleolus they produce ribosome they also produce rna okay that is ribonucleic acid ribosomes ribonucleic acid these both structures are actually produced inside the nucleolus so that is a function of nucleolus apart from this we were talking about chromatin fiber chromatin fibers are the long thread like structure which is present around the nucleoplasm of the nucleus now what is this chromatin fiber they are long thread like structure and this thread like structure is a very important structure inside the nucleus because they get condensed to form chromosome so this is a long thread like structure children okay these thread like structure they undergo coiling coiling and super coiling initially and these coiling will have an important structure and the final structure will be in the form of chromosome please understand this is a structure of chromosome and this chromosome so this is a chromatin fiber they are loose thread like structure okay this thread like structure undergo condensation so it is a condensed condensed structure means the long thread will loop pull up pull up they spool up very tightly they pack they super coil they wind up so there are so many you know uh, internal winding takes place with the help of protein and finally they become chromosomes these chromosomes inside this chromosomes we have dna okay and these dna carry gene please understand this is all interrelated chromatin fibers are the loose thread like structure a long thread like structure which occupies the nucleoplasm of the cell they undergo condensation and finally form chromosome and chromosome structure is formed only when the cell undergo division please understand this chromosome structure is formed only when the cell undergo cell division it is not like all the time the cell will have chromosome structure no the normal cell the without cell division if the cell is not undergoing cell division then the chromatin fibers are present when the cell is about to start with the cell division the chromosome structure is formed by condensation of this chromatin fiber and these chromosome will have a dna that is Uh, the hereditary material of that organism internally they carry genes genes are the characters of an organism which get transferred from the parent to the offspring now apart from this we these are the organelles which are living structure 
the non living structures are vacuole and granules it does not play a very major role but yes vacuoles are present only in plant cell which helps in storage of more amount of solutions ions waste products whatever which is required for the cell to perform its function they all get stored up inside the vacuole granules are the small tiny uh, you know granular structure which helps in feeding the cell with fat and other fiber structures okay so these this is about the important organelles which is present inside the cell hope you understood please make your own notes study the textbook and please make your own notes with all the key points and diagram should be prominent and labeling should be done neat thank you children a unique school based on indian cultural heritage and global vision which has a record of 100% result in icse state board and pu board examinations atriya educational institutions a famous name in mandya for more than a decade providing you a world class education from nursery to puc enhanced with a newly constructed environment friendly building spacious smart classrooms well equipped labs and library experienced teachers with motherly care and updated teaching methods including four language learning concept regular multiple cultural and sports activities and best vehicle facility what else do you expect join your children today we make them complete human beings and present them as real gift to the society shrimati anuradha ragu adhyaksharu ks ragu vakilaru hagu karyadarshigalu admissions open for 2020 and 21 Free KG, UKG classes to 10th standard. Sampar kisi Duravani Sanke, double nine eight six seven nine seven six five two, double eight six seven zero one five nine three six. Hago double eight six seven zero one five nine three seven. Experience Atreya, feel at home.